Last time we spoke about Bechira, <laughs> you know, free will, certain ideas, the limitations, the range. I mentioned certain of the difficulties philosophically. Why Bechira is a very difficult thing to understand because essentially we don't even know how it exists, you know, because I said, how can something exist in your mind that's not in the mind of God? Where would it take its existence from? Which, uh, you know, but the other the problem of foreknowledge, that you solve. Anyway, so we talked a lot about that, Bechir and so on and so forth. Uh, what Ramchal now does, is he now continues, he's speaking about the human condition. The human condition means, what's the setup? In order for the Rebbeim to achieve his intended purpose, he's going to create man with certain conditions. And it is those conditions, obviously, that's going to allow a person to successfully engage in what's called the avoida and the ultimate tachlas to get away the mahabo. You need what's called the necessary ingredients, like a recipe. Just like you need necessary ingredients to make a cake, you need necessary ingredients to, uh, to uh, what do you call it, um, uh, be involved in the endeavor of, of what's called uh, the Avoida and the Olim uh, Habba and so on, you know. Anyway, uh, so Bechira was certainly one of them. Uh, because, the, well, like I said, the essential idea of Bechira is that you have to be the cause or you need to be responsible for what happens. And the only way to do that is obviously you have free will. Without that, you're not a cause, so, and so on. Uh, it's very interesting, you know, I have to mention, you know, there are certain religions that they do not believe man has free will. It's just beyond belief how they got adherence. I just have to, you know, there is one specific, uh, what's called um, denomination of Christianity. You know, it's just incredible, you know. Uh, <coughs> yeah, we have, yeah, we have Calvinism. Mm -hmm. Calvin? Oh, we see the signs. John yeah, John Calvin. You know, he's Switzerland, you know. He held that... <coughs> Most people have no Bechira. means when you are born, you are doomed <clears throat> to perdition. Nothing you can do will save you. I mean, that is a, uh, that is a religion of such incredible pessimism. It's beyond belief. That means a guy is born, he knows he's doomed. You know, you have salvation. to ask yourself why he was born so altogether. Where does salvation come from? There is no salvation for him. He's doomed. It was, when a guy is born, it's determined. Are you doomed or... You have salvation, which means you can get Olim Hab and so on. Uh, the incredible thing now, why would a guy who's doomed have any incentive to be good? <laughs> I mean, what's the difference? He's doomed anyway. He might as well go out and kill everybody, rob everybody, etc., etc. You know, you know how can a man can make that type of pronouncement? No, he's doomed to be good. And then a guy's so doomed good. to be good. Yeah. yeah well, whatever. I mean, what kind of, you know, there's no like, problem. It's one of the most. It's like what's it? It's one of the most pernicious doctrines, evil doctrines I've ever heard. And he's got a whole following. Why would people even follow this nonsense? It's incredible. But like what you're so saying, I'm just saying, and th this concept of no is, is called determinism, where you know you, you it's determined what you will do. You have no free will, and so on. And there are many people, by the way, who believe that we have no free will. It's not possible, you know. Many scientists believe we have no free will, and the more involved you are in neurobiology, you know, that you know, it seems like you have no free will. It's, like it's all brain dictated, you know, it's your, it's your neurons. It's your genetics and your neurons, and that's the end of it. You have no, even criminals, there's certain aspects of the brain which are more pronounced or whatever, and therefore that predisposes them, you know, to kill. And therefore, what do you want from these guys? What are we putting these guys in jail for? You know, the, you know, I mean, the, the, the real idea is that, no, everybody's born with a predisposition. <coughs> no question about that. You know, two infants who are lying on the table, you know, the cribs, you already could see one is different than the other. You know, and they didn't have much time to acquire anything. You know, they're four days old, you know. There's a th and that's called temperament. You know, and that, a temperament is that which gives you a tendency. But the whole concept of Bechira is to fight that is a struggle to fight the temperament. So if, if a child is born and he has a certain temperament, aggression, some kids are more aggressive than others,
just naturally like that, you know? So clearly that's the avoider, that is what is given to him to struggle against. But to say that there's no free will, because he has certain aspects of the brain that allow him to be more angry or more aggressive, you know what I'm saying? That's ridiculous. But this is, there are many scientists that hold that uh, the, the people do not have any free will. It's all genetics, and it's all brain determined, and so on, you know. So, yeah, Judaism, of course, is completely refutes that, where it says, where Barsham says, You choose evil, you choose good, you choose life. So clearly, Judaism says that there is free. But I remember what I said last week, there's a range of free will. Even we don't have complete free will. Nobody has complete free will. There are things which are preordained, where you have to do, go into, and that's <coughs> not you know. But wherever you have free will, you can, you know, you can uh, do whatever you want. Even if your temperament is different. And so, yeah. So that's, that's an important thing to remember. Any case. So the Ramchal says in the Perikimel Base, section 2, that mm, what the Bansha did is very interesting. There's a thing called the spiritual universe and a thing called the physical universe. You know, and each, each universe, so to speak, or each dimension, has its own rules and regulations, its own physics, its own laws, and so on. But they're very different laws. Mm -hmm. They are completely different types of reality. We have no asoga of the reality, we have no comprehension of the reality of a spiritual being. In fact, you cannot see a spiritual being. And the Ramchal defines <coughs> spirituality as anything which is not subject to the, to the, um, um, to the receptivity of a, uh, of a, uh, of a spiritual domain. In other words, it is not possible in any which way to see a spiritual entity. That's why when a malach appears to you, he always appears to you in some physical guise. But that's a, it's like a suit of clothing to him. That's not really him. You know, like uh, Menoyach with Shimshon. You know, he came to the Malach, came to Menoyach and said, you're going to have a son. And he's going to be a, a tremendous savior against the Plishtim song. What about with um, in cases where we went up, like for example, Tyr, he went up and you heard from Surya Pargon or you heard from Gabriel, one of these type of things. Uh, even that, yeah, which I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that would mean that he became conscious <coughs> And he was able to communicate, so to speak. It doesn't mean he saw them out. But it doesn't mean he actually saw what a spiritual being is. You know what I'm saying? It means they obviously are able to assume a specific guise where they can communicate with you. With Elio Hanavi, you know, like I say, by the Malach by Shimshon, or by Avram Avinu, they came and dressed as Arabs. I mean, not dressed as Arabs, they, they assumed the body of an Arab. You know what I'm saying? But you know, other than that, you can't, um, in no way. It's the idea of chrome photography. Nah, oh, even the auras. It's all a hoax. No, they... Is it a hoax? No, I don't know if it's a hoax. No, there's an they aura. They photograph or... Yeah, video auras. Ghosts yeah. ghosts that are in the room or something. Some guy. Oh, ghosts? Yeah, chrome photography. <laughs> well, that, I, I know they can photograph, or they say... It's, it. it's in the world, you know, with psychics and people that communicate with people that passed on. That, uh, they, they well, there are ghosts. There are ghosts. They, they, no, there are, you know, uh, there are ghosts because w there are nishamas that are not allowed entry into Gan Eden at one day because they're not zuchah, whatever reason. And the, but there are, but these same nishamas are not allowed, right? Uh, so they, they they don't have entry there yet. They, they can't come back. So they're in the world. So there are nishamas which are bound to the physical world, and they must wander the physical world. I mean, the famous story of Rabbi Akiva. Yeah, how did Kaddish originate, you know? Famous story of Rabbi Akiva. He was walking in the forest, and he sees something. It was an, what's called an apparition. It wasn't, it wasn't human, you know? So he approached it. Obviously, it was in a shama. It was a ghost. You could call it a ghost. So he asked the person, so the person said, 
he can't go to Ghana. He needs the creeds. He's got to, whatever. He's got to chop wood, whatever. So, you know. What so is there the what? physical manifestations like, like they claim? Or? Well, Rabbi Akiva's different. You know, Rabbi Akiva's able to see, you know, obviously the, the, whoever that was was able to assume some aspect of physicality where Rabbi Akiva can then see him. The average guy obviously couldn't see him. You know, so, so What's a Vasco? What? What's a Vasco? No, Vasco is a divine voice. It's that, a, and that you can't really well, you hear it. Yeah, you can. Well, it doesn't mean you can. It doesn't mean it's a sound wave. It just means that you're able to that the Basco can assume a sound quality that you hear. But is the origin a sound wave? Are we talking here about we're, vocal cords that vibrate? We don't know what that no, is. No, we don't know. We don't exactly. Know. Well, so clearly, they can what's called they can interface with the real world. But that then they have to assume some specific characteristic property of the real world. So, Rabbi has said that Nebua means you can look into the next world up. Yeah, that's right. You can be conscious. So and, in uh, that, is, that also, is that also something where you can sort of get a communication like as in Tierra Rebbe Shemal Satsmo, or is that an actual looking in that somehow the Navi was able to actually see the spiritual realm? No, you cannot see a spiritual world. So, unless what, you are spiritual. Then, so it's just a communication. <laughs> There's really a one-way communication. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I don't. I. I. I Moshe Rabbeinu clearly was. You know, he was there for forty days, whatever, and so on. He had a whole dialogue with Malach, everything. You know, but does that mean that he saw spiritual entities in their true spiritual form? It's not clear, but it, it wouldn't be surprising if he didn't. I mean, somehow they're able to manifest themselves. To a physical being, even Moshe Rabbeinu, and so on, but not that he was able to comprehend the true spiritual nature of a malach. I mean, as far as I understand, you know, uh, unless you bring a peers that said no, 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 that he actually saw the malach in their true form. It's a different story, but I, it, I, I don't think so, you know. The but that doesn't mean the of a person is a spiritual entity correct. and would be able to see this malach in its own true form. Yeah, but as long as the Hashem is tied to a goof, it's severe. He was totally... But he still had a goof. Even though the goof ceased, the goof in his case ceased to uh, in any way exert any type of force, (coughs) physical. He didn't eat or sleep, you know, that's what he says, right? You know, so clearly the the goof became inert. It didn't impose its needs on Moshe Rabbeinu. You know what I'm saying? But it's still tied to a goof. So that's a limitation. In fact, that's the real limitation of the neshama. Yeah, there is such a, a, a type of like the neshama just leaves the body temporarily and comes back down. That who? The neshama, you know, takes takes off the cloak of the body and goes up and then comes back down after a while. Like Yeshua when they went up to Ganeiden, so I mean, his neshama goes up there. Yeah. Well, even sleep, uh, you know. It's yeah, but that's when he gets you know, back attached, he's gonna get. But the, but you never. Or, but it doesn't lose its attachment to the physical. You know, it doesn't work because then that would be death. I mean, so, that's why they thought Moshe was dead. Well, they thought because there was an image in the sky. <coughs> you know, the sudden fooled them. You mentioned sleep with the components of, and then washing in the morning. That has a yeah, well, that's a tumor. Yeah, that's, that supposedly yeah. has an effect on the spirit. Yeah, so there's no question that there's an intermingling between spiritual and physical. <laughs> yeah. But the key concept, what limits the neshama, is its attachment to the body. So what the Ramchal says is that what the Ramchal did is he created a being, an entity, that has two opposite natures, literally. He took a neshama, which is purely spiritual, and he fused it, merged it, with a physical body. So in essence, man, okay, Man is a composite of two opposite uh, dimensions. Mafila and Sos. What was that? Mafila and Sos. Yeah, which is really incredible because man is the only one. There is no such being. Malachma, Ruchni, and all the, the animals, everything else is physical. But man is a true composite of both. An animal has a nefesh and bahamis, that's a spiritual. What was that? An animal also has a nefesh and bahamis. Yeah. That's a spiritual. No, it's a physical thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's a life force. It's not. It's not. The life the force. Life. The life force is physical, but it is incredibly subtle. Ramchal says, 
the life force, right, is a physical thing, but the Ramchal calls it, calls it in another place, Dakshibadakas, most subtle of the subtle. You know what it's like? A radio wave. Is a radio wave, I mean, they're flying through the, you know how many waves are going through this room? We can't even believe the amount of radio waves, x-rays, cosmic rays. You know, we are bombarded by neutrinos. I mean, it's beyond belief what is coming through this room. You know what I'm saying? Um, Spectrums of light. So, yeah, so besides, you know, besides all the, the uh, you know, the, uh, what do you call it, the electromagnetic spectrum, a cosmic ray is going through this room. The neutrinos is going through this room. I mean, you know, you know everything else is, you know. So the, the question is, is that Rukhni? Is a electromagnetic wave, radio wave, is that Rukhni? It's measurable by physical... Yeah, well, so it's not. I, there's no way you could touch it, look at it. You don't know what it is. Nobody knows what these things are. Nobody has ever seen a light wave. You know? Right? So, but it's physical. So clearly you see that there are, actually you can even say, if you really want to be, you know, that the physical universe is divided into three different types. One is the actual atoms itself. An atom is physical, you know, which means it can be touched, measured, you know, observed, and so on, you know? Whatever. You said only man. What about the dogs in Mitzrayim that didn't bark? What were they perceiving? How did that, how did they reach out of the animal kingdom? Well, it, 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 of... so does that mean they, they see a malach in his true form? No. They could sense a malach, yeah. A dog doesn't have to see anything. A dog senses something, you know, birds, when a predator approaches, you ever see, birds go crazy. They sense the presence of a predator. They don't see it, you know. Before a storm, like uh, Katrina. Before the earthquake, animals are running. In fact, that's one of the signs of an earthquake. Somehow they sense an earthquake is about to happen. Or a tsunami. I remember the one when, in, uh, when the tsunami happened in, was it, 2005? And then Thailand. Yeah, over there. So all of a sudden, they see all the animals start running uphill. Days before. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, oh, what's going on here, you know? Clearly, they sense something was about to happen. But where they pick it up from, you know? But, hey, so, the, so there's the physical world, but then the second thing is the world of energy. Energy. The, a light wave is pure energy, you know, and, and so on. So what's that? We don't know. Yet it's part of the physical world. In fact, matter is nothing more than frozen energy. We don't even know what energy is and so on. But it's something, you know what I'm saying? So that's the second part of the physical world. So you have matter, you have energy, right? But what's the third part, you know? Life, like you mentioned, that's energy? Well, yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe. Maybe life is energy of some sort, you know? But there's also the mental world, the mental world, you know, that, you know, you ever have out-of-body um, phenomenon? Yeah. Oh, wouldn't that be Neshama? What? Yeah. No, it's not the Neshama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, why, why, how, how is it not? Astral projection. Because even an animal yeah. has that. Yeah. You can actually float thoughts. outside of your body. His thoughts. And uh, so the whole question is, what's floating? It's clearly you, you know, it's... You exist, or you have <coughs> specific expressions or manifestations, but an out of body experience, why, which many people have experienced, why and so on. Why, 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 why not? Why do you think it's mental? It's not, it's, 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 it's mental. What? Why do you, you put this near death into the mental realm? I would put dreams into the mental, I would put different things into no, the No, dreams is just nothing more than that. The, uh, dreams are an imagination fired up. By the brain. But what's imagination? Isn't that mental? when you dream? What what faculty of the mind are you using? Cognitive, imagination. All cognitive. Yeah, imagine, what is your imagination? Imagination is not. No, it's a faculty of the brain. What's thinking? I mean, all this is ah, all that is is not. What's thinking? It's not I physical. don't know. We do it, but so, so I have no idea what's going on. The bottom line is, all these things have to drive scientists crazy. It looks like it's. It drives them nuts because they can they get. It looks like it's a. Look like <laughs> so so what I would say that this mental phenomenon. You know, I'm saying like, you know, mental phenomena where you can actually exist on a mental plane. So I'm using astral projection, which is out-of-body experience, as that, you know. Well, why, so well, we, we clearly see that the physical world has many different levels 
of uh, of, uh, of um, existence. existence. Yeah. But, it's, why, why but we still that? say it's physical. No, he says the, the, the neshama itself. We don't find in this world el hachios v'hahaskala. Hachios v'hahaskala. He said. Then he says it also could be mezachik the goof, and that doesn't do that yet. But he says that the neshama in this world does chiyus and haskala. If that's the neshama. Well, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. So, uh, what does chiyus? Ca- cognitive thought. He says the neshama. Wait, wait, wait. What does chiyus, the life force of the body, mm-hmm. is the nefesh tachtoyim? Not that the neshama. Of, the neshama could be the origin of that. I mean, he puts it together with the neshama. But no, but in the other place. It's called the nefesh tachtoina. Okay. I mean, so the neshama can have many parts. The, the, neshama, right? the neshama is the nefesh yoyna. That's the root. But what finally, what actually is in the body is a physical thing called the nefesh tachtoina. But it's dak shebedak, as Ramchal says. It is the most subtle thing around. And it, by the way, and its residence is the blood. The residence of the nefesh tachtoina is the dam. That's why there's dam hanefesh. Like dam hu nefesh. Because whatever it is, we don't know. You know, scientists obviously didn't have discovered that. But the actual nefesh Bahamas, which is the called the nefesh tachtoina, the uh, the lowermost soul, its residence is the blood. Okay, but it is an incredibly subtle thing that nobody has any idea what it is. Now, it's true that the original root of all that can be in the neshama, but it clearly has a. It has a, a specific physical uh, idea. That's what it is. What, what? So th- that's what we're talking about. So, you know, so the physical universe has three components or dimensions to it. One dimension of the physical universe is the physical itself. The second area of the physical universe is energy. That nobody knows what energy is. <coughs> Although we know that energy, matter, is concentrated or frozen <coughs> energy, you know. But nobody knows what energy is. Although it's like, it's the whole physics is based on energy. And energy is the electromagnetic uh, spectrum. X-rays, radio waves, all en- light waves. It's all energy, but nobody knows what it is. And the third area of the physical world is the mental. Like I said, there's a world that's mental and, and, and therefore... Uh, uh, I want to point out something which is very interesting. There is a set of beliefs, actually it's India, it's called yoga. Yoga. You know yoga? Not yogurt. Let's <laughs> <laughs> not continue. That's not Greek. 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 That's Greek. <laughs> yeah, it's Greek. <laughs> it's called yoga. What is interesting is they feel, and I'll tell you what, I hold it, I'll tell you what, as far as I'm concerned, they're making an incredible mistake. Why? They can achieve certain states of consciousness. They meditate, whatever, right? And they meditate and they achieve certain states of consciousness. So what happens then is they call it, if they meditate long enough on whatever going into all practice and so on, they achieve a certain state called samadhi. That's what they call it. Samadhi is like an incredible state where you are so focused inside that you lose all contact with the physical world. You know, you, you, it's like, uh, you're so focused that you're not conscious of the physical world anymore. You're just, con- you're just conscious of self, whatever that is, right? So they think that's ruchni. <coughs> they think that's ruchni. They think that's spiritual. That's their spirituality. Their spirituality, yoga, is to so focus and to be so removed from the physical world, and they do that through meditation, okay, is that they think it's spirituality, ruchnius. But it's a tremendous mistake. Why? Because there's three dinim here. There's, are you in the physical world? Are you in the spiritual world? Or are you in the mental world? So what they've achieved is the ment- a mental experience where they are so focused in self that they completely sever consciousness of an outside world. It's interesting. But what they've gone really is they've gone from a physical to a mental experience. So they think, as long as you're not physical, what must you be? Spiritual. No. There's a mental. That's what they've got. Which is part of the physical. Would emotional be included in mental? 
if people get a feeling that they're, they're looking at a, some sort of scenery in nature, a lot of people claim when they're in nature... Yeah, they, spiritual. it's a spiritual... Of course it's not spiritual. You know, it's, well, it's, it's not spiritual. Emotional experiences are a physical property. First of all, why... You know, it's like thinking. Wait. Thinking, imagining, and so on. Creativity. These are physical experiences. Experiencing the motion is a physical thing. You know, people go, you know, they, like some guys, you know, some people go and they attend, you know, some kind of a musical concert, you know, and all of a sudden the music is so sublime that they get carried away. It's just, oh, what a spiritual, you know. It's not spiritual. It, it's the capacity of the human being to experience, you know, and to achieve a certain state of ecstasy. Is ecstasy, exhilaration, is that spiritual? What, what is spiritual in this world? Wait, 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 wait. Is there spiritual uh, wait, 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 No. It's a, wait, wait, wait. It's a physical experience. You know, the, but the thing is that there are many levels of physicality. So these yogis, right, what they do is they experience mental phenomena and they call it spiritual because it's clearly not physical. But what they don't recognize is that there are mental experiences. But spiritual, it's not. At all. Because? No, I'm just saying. What they've tapped into is a mental plane, but not a spiritual plane. A novi attaches to a spiritual plane. That's a different type of experience. What does that mean? I went to Navua, right? Uh, a Navua is a true spiritual experience. And so is Ruch HaKodesh not of our time. You know, when a God all of a sudden knows something, how do we possibly know? That's not the real Ruch HaKodesh. That's the borrowed term for another experience altogether. Ruch HaKodesh is different. Okay? What is the difference in Ruch HaKodesh, the real one, and the Vua? The Vua, okay, if I remember what I explained last time, you know, is with a Shechina is mezdabek with the neshama or the shurish of the neshama, the milo. As a result of that, the shechina sends forth what's called a shefa. It's an incredible spiritual wave, whatever, force, whatever it is, right? That hits the neshama, of which the neshama is now mezdabek the neshama, and goes down. It goes, the neshama through all the halakim, and then it goes into the nefesh, Tachtoino, right? Which and then the nefesh tachtoino, which, which is physical, yes. And then the nefesh tachtoino charges the mind, takes over the imagination, and the novi sees, using his imagination as a movie screen. That's the so, However, but what, what does he see? At what level? That he can look into Ilmatsilus. It means he can look into, it means he is standing, there are different realities, if you remember, okay? In Atsilus, that's not, well, that's Oilam Hazer, right? There is only the Rebbe Hashem exists, so to speak, in, in Atsilus. In other words, when you look at the Rebbe whatever that means, and so on, you can look at him, in, and he has different manifestations depending on which world you're in. When a monarch feels the Rebbe in, let's say, in a, in a dimension called Yitzira, it's not the same as a Malach who experiences the Roshan in Bria. Two different experiences, and so on. One is obviously much lower than the other, and so on. So, in a Vua is that's what happens by a Novi, and as a result of that, he can look into Atsilas, which is astounding, and he can communicate with the revelation of God as he appears in the world called Atsilas which is the highest of the Olam Hazer. Ruch HaKodesh, but he, where is he standing in? He is standing in Bria. In other words, it's as if he's standing in one dimension and he can look into or experience the Rabbi Hashem's presence as it would be in the highest dimension. Got it? Do we know what, what they taught in Navi school? Wait, 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 wait. Now, so that's what a Navi does, which is incredible. We, we have no concept of what he experienced, you know. Now, there's a difference in Nevi'im. What's the difference? Moshe Rabbeinu, which is incredible, 
also experience the Rabbanu Shalom from oil and brio, because you can't walk into Atsidas. That's what Rabbanu Shalom said. You're on your own You can't walk into my domain and experience me. I'm sorry. It's out. Right? But what Moshe Rabbeinu was able to do, I mean, in not in literally, but in a consciousness sort of way, is go right up against the wall of Atsidas and like you, like you put your face to the, you ever see put your face to a glass, like this glass, right? You want to look into the, he has his notion into the, right? Like you put your face right up to the glass, you know? So you got the best vision of the shul. Because you're right up against the glass, you see. Now, the other Nevi'im were in Bria, but they were like three miles away from the glass. That's the difference. But they all have to be standing, or the the perception starts from Bria, which is the third. Remember the Olamas, right? The lowest one is called Asiya, which itself has many dimensions. And then above Asiya, you have what? Yitzira, which is another dimension. And then from Yitzira, you have Bria, which is another dimension. And then after that is Atsilas. Nothing exists in Atsilas except the presence of God. But, uh, but, but the manifestation or the gila of the Rabbanu Shalom at that level is beyond our understanding. And then there's the Rabbanu Shalom in Odom Kadman, which is Oilam Habo. Nobody has any hasaga of what type of a revelation that is. Okay. But anyway, so Moshe Rabbeinu was able to stand right up against the glass that separates, so to speak, Bria from Atsilas and look right in. Total clarity. Unbelievable. It's the greatest perception of God or the way the the, the Shalom, Shrina, that a person could ever have. All the other Nevi'im, uh, Shmuel, right? All the other Nevi'im, Shmuel, and so on, you know. David HaMelech, well, whatever, you, you know, Yeshaya and so on, so all the other, and so on and so forth. They also saw the God as he appears in the early Matzilas, but they were much further back. So therefore, their view was distorted. Wasn't as clear as Moshe Rabbeinu. The Chazal called Aspaklaya Hameira. But what it is is, what's your distance from looking into Oil Matzilas? So Moshe Rabbeinu was right up against the wall, or the glass, partition. Everybody else was much further back. And if you were not such a great number, you were much further back, you see. Until you come to Yecheskel. Where was Yecheskel? Where did he stand? Remember, the further back you go, the greater is the disclarity or the unclarity of the Shekhinah. And therefore, the message is not as clear. <clears throat> so, when Yecheskel got Nevoah, and his Nevoah was awesome, I mean, the whole Maisim Rekovah is based on his Nevoah. The Maisim cover the Divine Chariot, the story of the Divine Chariot, which is Yecheskel, Perak Beis, and so on and so forth, is the fundamental structure of all Kabbalah. I mean, that's really what it is, Maisim Rekovah, and so on, right? So, you figure, wow, if that's what he saw, where was he standing? Because where he was standing, so to speak, is the level of clarity that he had. So where was he standing? Remember, the definition of Navua is you need to be able to see the Rabbanu Shalom's presence at the manifestation of Hatzilus. But, depends where you're standing. So Moshe Rabbeinu was right up against the, the partition. Yecheskel and all the other Nevi'im were uh, in Bria looking into Atsilas, right? Yecheskel was not in Bria. He was in Yetzira looking through Bria into Atsilas. So from our standpoint, or from his standpoint, he had an incredible, inferior view of the Shekhinah. The Amazing. The yeah, but the whole structure of Kabbalah as revealed f from him is the Maisim Recovers from Yechezkel, right? Ye Yechezkel had a greatly inferior view because he wasn't even in Bria. He was, his consciousness was fixed in Yitzira, looking through Bria into Atsilas. That's what Nevoah is. So if somebody, all of us who are not Nevi'im, do not have a spiritual... Experience wait, 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 wait. Now, the next thing we come to is Ruach HaKodesh. The real Ruach HaKodesh. What's the real Ruach HaKodesh? In, 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 this, in this model that I've just given you, 
Atzilus and Bria and where you're standing and all that, right? It's all right. What Ruch HaKodesh is, is that you can enter Yitzira, but you can no longer see the Rebbe in, you, you do not stand in Bria, you don't see Atzilus. But what you can do is experience the residence of Olim Yitzira, which are fundamentally Malach. So when Rabbi Akiva, the T. Rabbi Shmuel, when Rabbi Shmuel went up, the famous tefillah in, uh, in Yom Kippur, that Rabbi Shmuel, there was a gzera, that the Asura Ruga Marcus would die. So they told him, okay, go up and see, can we avert this decree? You know, so what did he do? So he closed his eyes, he uttered a shem. So that's how you do it. There are all kinds of shemas in Yehudim. You know, you have to know how to do it. You know, a part of, if you went to a Novi school, you know, they would teach you how to meditate. You had to be incredible, makubal, shamus, and yehudim. You know, there's all kinds of prerequisites even to do that and so on and so forth. Closed his eyes, went right up, but he didn't go up. He was still here. What happened is that his consciousness was opened to Olam Yitzira. And remember I told you that, that you and the Shom is connected to all the alamas, because you have five parts, and there are five alamas. So what was activated, right, he was in Yitzira talking to Ish Levush Abadim, right, a man clothed in white. What do you mean a man clothed in white? Obviously it was a Malach, but the guise that the Malach appeared to him was, you know, in white, because you cannot look, even in the Ruch HaKodesh, you cannot see a spiritual entity in its true nature, you know. So he was able to talk to this being, Mechor Parvet, whatever, Actually, that's what he said. He heard from Mechor Parvet, and so on. So he's able to speak to this being, or Malach, whatever it was. That's Ruch HaKodesh. But Ruch HaKodesh, you can no longer see into Atzilus. And therefore, he's not a Novi. A Navur means you could see into Atzilus and connect with the Shurish, with the Shekhin itself. So. If you can't do that, if you can only speak, then you're, it's Ruch HaKodesh. That's the real Ruch HaKodesh. So and where we Rabbi Akiva with the famous four, remember the four people went to the par- yeah. Paradise and so on, right? What did they have? Did they have Nevoah or did they have Ruch Chodesh? They had Ruch Chodesh. That's all it was. They had no Nevoah. But their Ruch Chodesh is incredible. So what happened was they all went up because they, they were all incredible Tanoim. I mean, you know, Rabbi Akiva and we talk about the Yishev Rabbi and so on and so on, and so on you know. They, they, they achieved an incredible level of Ruch HaKadosh, so they're able to see into Olam Yitzira. And that was the confusion. Because Achia, Rishon Avuyo, he took a look and saw Ach, uh, Matat. And Matat, is, which is one of the greatest of Malachim, is so awesome that he said there are two gods here, you know, and so on, you know. Anyway, um, so therefore they had Ruch HaKadosh. But Ruch HaKadosh ended. Nevoah ended when? After the destruction of the Rish Amigdash, Hananiah, Mishor, Barzariah. That was it. That means a person could no longer enter, and that was the, that's the concept of the Chub bias. When the Beis Amigdash was destroyed, so we experienced it as what? How do we experience the Beis Amigdash destruction? There's no Shechina, right? Whatever that, right? There's no Shechina. The Nevi'im experienced it, that you cannot look anymore at Silas. So fundamentally, the war ended. What was left? Ruach HaKodesh. That was left. Okay? And that's, these are the people who experienced Ruach HaKodesh. But that also ended. You know? When did that end? Why did that end? Uh, yeah, exactly. Because in order to, be a, to have Ruach HaKodesh or Novi, you had to be tall. Real tall, I'm not talking about Almigvis, you need the what? The Paraduma. And the Paraduma ended in the days, I think, of Rova. They ran, whatever it was, they ran out of ashes, and so on and so forth. And that was it. So, therefore, fundamentally, we're all Tmei Mace. We can't get rid of it. There's no way that you can get rid of Tmei Mace. You know so what I'm saying? Ch- what? A child could avoid become Tmei Mace. Well, you know, if, there we go. you go already. through life and never be Tmei Mace? <clears throat> no, theoretically, I'm just saying, like... Like those children of that they used to carry the, the waters for 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 them. Well, it, it, theoretically, it's I mean, it's not possible. But you, if you're not Tomei, you don't need the Paraduma, right? 
But we're all Tomei, and as a result of that, we cannot achieve either Nevoa or Rucha Kodesh, because we don't have the Paraduma. You know. But you have to be really tall. An interesting Maestro of Nechun Ben Akona, who's a tremendous Makubal, one of the greatest in Nechubam, you know. Nechun Ben Akona. Um, so uh, he went into a, a, a trance, which is Ruch Kodesh, you know. So I, I forgot who, I think it was Ruch I'm not sure. They had to talk to him. So they had to bring him out of it. So what they do? They took a beggar nida and they touched him. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> because Tuma and Tahara, in order to be, in order to be, uh, they probably came to, in order to be Nevoa uh, or Baruch Kodesh, you had to be Torah, real Tahara. So they just touched him, that was it. His Baruch Kodesh ended. So, you know. But the main idea is the is the, the concept. So that's a real spiritual experience. Who? Gilu Elio is a physical experience. I mean, it's a spiritual being, you know. But Elio comes to you in what? As a as a human, he is able to put on a human garb, and you talk to him, you know. So you have a you have a conversation. Gilu, how can a spiritual thing have a teeth? Where does he get this human uh, form from? You know, he's able to, you know, he's like a chameleon. You ever see a chameleon? Change colors, mm-hmm. and depending on where it's at. And you know, you can just come into it. I don't know how he does it, you know. Uh, and just put on a human garb right, and talk right, to you right, like right. a human. I mean, he, he's obviously not human anymore. What's although he went up as a human. What's your definition of physical and spiritual? Okay. Where, 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 where oh, are we? So, uh, where oh, are we? Yeah, so therefore, the old. <laughs> so what? Where are we? <laughs> so, what I'm where saying, a spiritual experience <laughs> is an experience that is given to you from some entity. The Shefa has to be from a Ruchnistic entity. Whether that be the Shechina, whether that be a Malach. It has to come from a spiritual entity, and that shefa, that force that enables you to communicate, contact, or experience, has to be a ruchnistic being. That's a spiritual experience. However, all the other experiences, to see a beautiful sight, experience an incredible concert, what does that do with spirituality? And what happens when Those we have ecstatic a- states of human emotions and so on. What, what happens when we have a good shvanesri? What what is that? Well, that's an interesting question. That's an interesting question. That's a good question. Feeling uh, different. Yes. Well, feeling different doesn't mean it's ruchni. It's vaporous, no? Wait, 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 wait. So that's a good question. You know. When we talk about ruach hakodesh today, we just talk about mention that. That means you have an insight. You know something that there was no way it wasn't communicated to you by any physical means. You just know it. And you know that you know it. You know, hey, how did I know this, you know? That's Ruch HaKadosh, that we call, but it's not the real Ruch HaKadosh. It came from a spiritual entity? Yes, yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't a communication, it was just... Although there are psychics that can pull that off also. But the difference is, because you don't realize the human, a human being has an incredible capacity to know information not necessarily through the five senses. You can, there's a way the you state. can know Maybe information. The what? Maybe it was through the mental state. Yeah, but it's a mental, it's a mental gift. So it's well, not, we all have that. That's not spiritual. Exactly. But it's not spiritual. Exactly. So because have the, the mind can access information not through the five senses. We don't know how. That's called, you know, uh, sixth sense. Or, right. or Do I hear paranormal. how should I invalid have any spiritual experience Who? in my life? That what? Do I, have I had any spiritual experience in my life? Yes. Well, oh, so if a person, let's say, go, if a person, what? Yes, because the, the, when you do a mitzvah, what are you really doing? You're connecting. You're really connecting to an awe. When you, you know, when you do a mitzvah, you connect to an awe. An awe is what? What? Yeah, yeah, but that can be interpreted because real kedusha only comes after you're dead. 
or after the Zikr Chagos. So I've, I've had I haven't talked about that. that you know, that's later. Have but, I been aware of any spiritual experience? Have I really been cognizant of it? Well, you f wait, 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 wait. You when you do a mitzvah, then you connect to the awe of that mitzvah. That's Ruchnius. Right, you understand what I'm saying? But what is it? Wait, what is it? Yeah, wait, wait, wait. The awe of that mitzvah really, okay, the awe of that mitzvah in many ways is the awe of that particular mitzvah that's connected to a specific sphere. So you are, doing a mitzvah is a spiritual trigger for a specific or of the spheres that corresponds to that mitzvah. But, here's the but, you need to be a keli to makabal. If you, un, in other words, you're getting it, but am I feeling it? There's too dinami, as they say. You know, you're getting it, but to feel it is a different story. It's a different story. You need, and that depends on how much geshem did you work out, did you remove. The greater is your, the, 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 the less gashmius you are, the greater is the, it's like the UMC, the UMC when you turn on a radio, you know, there's, there's waves, you know, but it depends on your radio, if you can listen to the signal, you know. Some radios are good, some radios all you hear static. So clearly the instrument, the cable that you use, right, is the determining factor of will you hear the radio broadcast or not. Same idea. You will get the witness. There are tzaddikim, I remember, I, I think there was a story, there, there are a lot of stories. I remember the Ribnitzer Rebbe. You heard of the Ribnitzer? He lived in 1895, 1995, you know? So he was very old and he was very sick, the Ribnitzer. You know, men So um, they didn't want to tell him because he was very sick. They didn't want to tell him, I think it was the Sorba Tavis. They didn't want to tell him it was the Sorba Tavis because he was very sick. You gotta go tell her, you know, I mean, it's a, he's gotta eat, you know? They didn't tell. So, came on server tables in the morning, so they're gonna, you know, I don't know, they're bringing food or whatever. So, all of a sudden, he looks at them and says, Heint me da fasten. We gotta fast. Excuse me, how do you know? He didn't look at the calendar, you know? There was no calendar there that he looked, because he felt the ruchness of that day. A lot of, there, there are people like that. They say the Chazoyinish, for instance. I think he was once went to Yushalayim, in the Seyna Nechazoyinish, you know, and he took a taxi, you know, and all of a sudden he said to the taxi driver, stop, you can't go further. He felt the Kedusha of that Mokum, and he knew when to stop. Well, we know, you know, right, if, if you dropped us in the middle of the mosque, we would know it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, so uh, this we you know you know you know I mean the only way we know it because we hear the uh, the, uh, the guy screaming out you know the uh, the, uh, the, 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 the 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 phrase of the Muslims you know is it one more way where is this coming from you know but um, but they will margish kedusha true spiritual or. And that's because they had the receptivity to do that. We don't. This is our problem. And you have a lot, you have a lot of kinds of stories like that, you know. So, so we have a, This is the concept of nevuah, ruach kodesh, you know. So we do have ex we we have true spiritual experiences all the time when we do mitzvahs. The real question is, what are we feeling? We are so tied down to the because physical I world. I think about something that I want truth. That's not a spiritual um, thought. That, that's, that's, no, that's, that's, that's spiritual. not spiritual. No. I mean, that's not, that's not a physical. It is spiritual. No, because it's truth, intellect. Why, why would I be? No, but why would I be? Oh, wait, 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 no, no, wait, wait, wait. Or, or goodness, or, or you know, righteousness. Wait, that, that's spiritual. Uh, <laughs> there's a difference, which is really what we're going to talk about now. You know, okay. Those are drives. There are certain drives which emanate from the neshama. <coughs> and there are drives which emanate from the guf. The desire of truth, you know, is a soul type of faculty. And you know, it was the desire for purpose, you know, meaning. Where do we get that from? 
Is it physical in the sense that, what is something in the brain? We have a drive for meaning. Everybody does. You know, uh, how many people go search from life through life, they want to know meaning. Well, what's it all about? You know, they search for purpose. Where is that urge coming from? Is it a mental? It's a spiritual drive emanates from the Shama of which we are a composite. See, so what the Ramchal says is that we are a composite of two things. But that's different than Ruchni. Because you are a Neshama as well as a Guf. So the Neshama will create drives in you which are soul driven. What do you mean in me? In no, you, anybody. Part of me. You, you need Shama. In the physical or the spiritual? No. It will create a drive in, in you, you, your Guf. In, what will happen is, of course, you'll feel it through your body. Okay. But the origin of the drive is soul. Whereas there are drives you want to eat. The origin isn't from the shama, it's from the goof. You see? Of course, you can only experience something through the physical. But the question is, what's the origin of the drive? So man is a composite, literally, of a shama and a goof, and each one exerts itself specifically in drives, urges. Mitzvah, Gerer's mitzvah would only be if the first mitzvah is, is a Rukhni? If the first mitzvah was a Rukhni? How much space do you have? Oh, you mean the desire to do another the mitzvah? The mitzvah would only be if the first mitzvah was a pure mitzvah, pure Rukhni. Pro- very possibly, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, but, the, but it's not... So true spirituality is when you experience something beyond Asiya. If it's physical, if it's energy, if it's mental, this isn't Ruchnius. But if what you are experiencing is something that is emanating from the Ruchnius to the world, that is Ruchnius. You are having a Ruchnius experience. And the second thing is, even if you're having a Ruchnius experience, but you are not Ois Galabit, you are not there, you won't feel it. Look, do you feel Shabbos? When Shabbos comes. Yeah. Well, you smell the chalm. Well, you smell the chalm. It's true. Well, what about the How does that connect? Eight right? How does that connect to the Shabbos Yisrael? Wait. Do you explain Shabbos? It's an aura of Shabbos that's experienced. That oh, that you see? So therefore, that's great. That means you are on a certain level. There are people that go through Shabbos and feel nothing. I mean, you know, it's Shabbos and that's it. But if you actually can feel something, you have reached a certain amount of rate in Yeah, it's not bad. That's how you know, you know? Okay, you know. So we do yeah, so or not, doesn't make them. So we don't have Ruch, that's nowadays Ruch HaKadosh. What is Ruch HaKadosh? Well, it, it has, yes. It has an emanation from another world, so to speak, and you're experiencing it here with the entrance of Shabbos, you know. And it's not because it became Saturday. There's an actual difference that you experience when Shabbos arrives, if, you know. It's, 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 if, if, I, if I'm thinking about purpose, my purpose, and yeah. I, I, you know, I have a sense that this is my purpose, so that, that's also like a real time fetish? It's always you, you person has a drive and he knows, well, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm making my mission in life, because I feel this is what I'm created for. Yeah, go ahead. That's, that's a, um, that's a, a, a type of real time fetish? No, 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 it's not because it's emanating no. from, from purpose, which is... No, it's purpose. emanating from the neshama. The drive to know purpose or meaning is a spiritual drive. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm feeling spirituality there? Uh, in that sense, yes. So that's the kind of Yeah, of yeah, in that sense, yes. So where's it will be a spiritual now? thing. Where's Rakhakesh in our days? There is no Rukha. The real one, in our days, nowadays. it's always, I know, I'm, I have an inspiration. I know something. That I could not have known. Emily, and all of a sudden, the idea falls in one mind. Into the you know, like you'd walk over to the Chavetz Chaim. You know, and there are many stories. You know, the tzaddikim and so on. And all of a sudden, you know, you'd ask them, and they they would tell you something, and it was true. How did they know? You know, uh, so that would be so. All of a sudden, if you all of a sudden you have an insight, an inspiration, you know, you could not have known any other way. It's probably Ruchah. That's what they would call Ruchah. But some guys are very psychic. It's not Ruch Kodesh at all. They have a psychic ability. 
What is psychic means? Well, the, 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 the mental. It's, it's, the, it's yeah. It's the he's tapping into the capacity of the brain to know information beyond the five senses. Which well, is physical. Physical. That's physical. Yeah. Why? Well, I mean, it says all over your forehead. Mm -hmm. What? It says all over your, over your forehead. Parts of the body. Well, parts of yeah. If you could read well, because parts of the body actually are indicators of who you are and what you are. You have the uh, palms, palmistry. You have the lines of the forehead, you know what I'm saying? Uh, different things that people read and so on and so forth. Yeah. But they are, they are nothing more than indicators. They are indicators of different events in your life. And, and palms would be indicators of things that will happen to you. What, what, what aura, the aura of a person has, if to me it's true, a or whatever it is, um, that is a spiritual thing or physical? I would be aura. physical. That's mental. That would be a, a uh, you know, some type of an energy. I'd say that's an energy thing. What about learning Torah? You're not in the mood when you start out, and then halfway through learning, you get this inspiration. You just feel you're so bonded with it, you're glowing from it. What, is that a spiritual experience? You know, again, it's um, it can easily be interpreted as a physical experience. It's an exhilaration of, of, of knowledge. You know, when you have an insight, you know, when you're, when you're struggling with a problem, you know, or uh, any problem, and all of a sudden you have an insight into a solution, there is an exhilaration. Why can't part of that be the aura of Torah? It's an intellectual uh, pleasure. You know, you know. Why can't that be part? Of, why can't part of that be the aura of Torah that it you could be. To? I'm not. I'm not saying it's not, but I can clearly say it's certainly like everything else. That it's an exhilaration. That the fact that you solve the problem, you know, and so on. It's an intellectual pleasure. We we derive pleasure from the intellect. Now, uh, I'm sure also there's a ruchnistic component because when you learn Torah, you bring down a certain ore. You know, Shina. yeah, and when you do that, and you margish that, you know, that, that 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 goes down, weaves into the pleasure centers of the brain, and gives you pleasure. But the origin of that would be ruchnis, yeah. So what is siyata deshmaya? Siyata deshmaya? Yeah. Well, well, no, siyata deshmaya is not related to that. It's simply divine assistance, so where the bosham assists you. To certain things and so on. We're talking about phenomena. Falls into your head. It's not, it's no. no, no, no. It falls into your head. You mean as an idea yeah. to a solution, something like that? Well, that's the intellect. You know, I mean, uh, you know, the Bosham. Look, everything runs through Teva, basically. That's what the Bosham ordered the world. You know, the mind has the ability to figure it out. Now, is there an origin behind that? You know what I'm saying? Behind the mind, that gives it to the mind, it's unknown, really, you know. But the brain <coughs> has the ability. Uh, it's just awesome what the brain can do. What's, what, how do how Remy determine that when somebody is clinically dead on the, on the operating table and he has an out-of-body experience, that's yeah. not the neshama? I read a story so is he, if, if, how, does, how do we know that's not the neshama? I was just confused for a little bit by being out of the body, didn't realize whatever was going on, and then was brought back down. Instead of it being an, uh, being a mental state, because and and related to that question is, why won't the entire mental world? Why is that not just an immersion phenomenon from the different synapses firing off, and therefore be essentially energy? Well, there are people that hold that an out of body experience is purely a mental experience. But how? Why not? Well, why do you have to say that? No, uh, no, 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 they're not dead. The brain is dead. No. Well, the brain is dead. No, they're just uh, in coma. They're in a coma and they, they don't respond to anything. No, it's not, uh, they're not dead. No. We, don't, we can't detect it. We don't know what that means. They're not dead. No. They're just in a coma state. So how could they say that we saw what's going on and they were right? That's the out of the body. So well, how, do you, how do you get it? How, do, how, is, the, how is the mind able to sense that this guy was wearing... It's not the mind. This, yeah. There is the, the self. It's the self that can leave the physical body. You're saying there's an what other real self that's still within it, the world. Which, which is... It, it's a plane of existence that the self can leave the body 
and observe things going on hundred miles away. So this point holds that there is such a thing as the consciousness that's separate from the body. Yes. The which is still bound by the world. Correct. That, in other words, the self with its consciousness exists, can exist beyond the body that observes other things. So where, I, I was... Again, there was once a very famous story, uh, famous, I remember it read his digest a long time ago. When it was, when it was, it was kosher. What? When it was kosher. It goes back 35 years ago. I think it was kosher there. What? Well, there's somebody, I think it was in Europe somewhere, where the guy was driving and all of a sudden, uh, what do you call it, um, cars. Miles and miles. And that was the end of it, uh, you know, uh, you know, blockage, that was it, you know. So, you know, and, and he's looking around and you can't move, right? And, uh, and, and so on and so forth. But and he figured probably some accident up on the road where they stopped all traffic. And, you know, everybody's cursing, guys. you know, they've got to get to their meetings and all that. So what this guy did, what this guy did, is he, off, or, or, or he uh, offered up a prayer. He said, whoever got stuck and really got injured up there, obviously it's a major accident and so on and so forth, may God help him. Let him have a fortune lame up. I think the guy was a guy, it wasn't, you know. Mm. Uh, you know, and then he offered up a prayer. Then yeah, probably uh, an hour later, the road cleared and they go through. Anyway, about seven months later, somebody calls him up. This guy who offered up the prayer. So some guy calls him up. You know, that's where the story goes, you know. I mean, it was in Rita Tide just so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know. So some guy calls him up and says, you know, I have to thank you. And I says, who are you? Thank me for what are you, you know? He says, I'll tell you, I was the guy. <laughs> Remember a couple of months ago, there was a major traffic stop in the I was the guy, the guy says, he was the guy that was in the accident, you know? And he heard, and he was able to, you know, and, it was, and he was out of body, you know? So he heard all kinds of incredible cursing. <laughs> but in all that cursing, he heard some kind of a tefillah, you know? And I have to thank you for the tefillah, so he tells the guy. So the guy says to him, what are you talking about? How did you know it was me? He heard a tefillah in the middle of all the, you know, the nivel pen, the cursing, and all that stuff, right? So how did you know it was me? So the guy says, I'll tell you, you know? I mean, I was like a couple of miles down the road, you know, it was a long line, you know. He says, I was able to go over to the source of the tefillah, and I looked at your license plate. <laughs> and I was, you know, looked at my license plate, you were comatose, you were completely gone, basically, and you got out of the body, went all the way a couple of miles, and you traced the source of the tefillah, looked at the license plate. You know, and then he remembered it, you know, like this. So when he woke up, oh, four, eight, nine, you know, whatever, you know, so, so, so I was able to locate you through your license plate. You believe this? No. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was a story. It was, it's a real life story that was brought down years ago, kind of 30 years ago. And it's, uh, there, are other, there have been other stories mm-hmm. that there were people that were comatose. That knew everything that went on the outside. People that were blind, say the color of the people that what they were wearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah, yeah. But this is so, so this is not It's not measurable. It's not measurable by any physical measurement measuring stick. Because they don't. If you are ruchni, if you really left the body, you would see malachim. You would see another world. You would see denizens, residents of well, the other well, world. Maybe you know, all you see is the physical. All it means is that you have left the body and are able to observe the well, physical. He, but he heard the feeling. He didn't actually hear the, the guy didn't see the sound waves. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't see no, he, he heard a spiritual feeling. Oh, no. no, he heard a guy he didn't speaking. He heard a sound wave. He, he heard a guy speaking yeah. and say, maybe may God be. help me, he heard the sound. Maybe. I mean, there's another story in the visions of visions of greatness. There's a, a Jewish book. I don't know. Who yeah, he's speaker. got also. Uh, so he got so somebody went up and he went through his dinner. Oh yeah, that. And yeah, and, and he came steps. back down because he had to be masaka and he knew exactly what. Yeah, he had yeah, to be yeah, yeah, yeah. I read that. Yeah. So so it's, that's sort of like that. So spiritual things. Yeah, but that's different. That's because he's experiencing spiritual beings. 
He's in another place. That's Ruchni. That this guy... Many people have this near-death experience. They, they go through a tunnel. And they yeah, see yeah. light at the end. Yeah, light. What is yeah, that yeah. light? What light is that? Yeah. So that's not yeah. maybe that's the shame. That's, that's called that's NDEs, near-death experiences. So, so maybe that's a spiritual... Yeah, I've seen some whatever. spiritual. Like going there, I mean, there are other, they don't feel a spiritual yet. Yeah, they don't really yeah, know. They're traveling. You know, the, the Mahalat from our All I'm saying is that... All I'm saying is that... All I'm saying is that, apparently, there is a mental state. The self can leave the body and have a, in, 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 in exist outside the body mentally, you know, and observe and so on, never re-enter. And that's, yeah, uh, as that's long as there's no, uh, there, it's, there's no reason, there's, what? What, what is the yeah, self? Uh, um, I mean, some people say the self is the most spiritual part of the person. I mean, it's the, the, most, the highest that's for them. Sure. Is, isn't the Shama the anyway, self? What? Isn't the Shama like you, the, the, the no, self? Like no, apparently not. No. No. But when you go up to Om HaLa, you go to Shemaim, you're still experiencing something. So yeah, that means course, that yeah. your consciousness gets transferred to the get transferred up the line as far it as It is a go? great mystery. What is the self? I mean, I don't want to do mitzvahs to somebody else. You know, so. Yeah. <laughs> Who and what is the self? That's the... But the end result is that the self experiences... It's not... It's not cl- I've never heard a clear exposition of who the self is. By the end of the day, you experience whatever you have to experience yeah. in terms yeah. of Olam Haba and getting all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, sure. It would seem so, sure. Yeah. Anyway, so... We're, uh, we're, we, you know, cover a lot of ideas and so on and so forth. Spooky ideas. Isn't it, yeah, no. Well, isn't so a combination but, um, of and Hashem? We're up to where Ram Khal says... That we are a composite of the neshama and the guf, and um, and each one exerts its own urges and so on. So that, that's so we must kind of we could tap into spirituality. But I understand that from from everything we said, what I understand is that most of what we see, experience is physical. Uh, the four olamos are are physical still. I tell you. Uh, for, no, no, they're spiritual. Say, o, 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 only, only, only Oilam ha, ha, Asiya is Asiya is physical. No, but yeah, even Asiya, wait. Yeah. Even Asiya has a chilek of it that's physical that and has a chilek of it that's ruchni. That's what, that's what we're talking about today. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. See, what well, the main thing I want to say is that when you do the mitzvahs, you know, is it possible to experience a spiritual... And the answer is yes. When you do mitzvahs, in the right way, completely, you are bringing down an ore. That's Ruchni. Okay? The real work is to do this. two dinim here. Let's look this way. You know? The first din is that you need to remove the physical physicality of the body. That's what you have to do. When a person is, 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 is you know, the, this, uh, when you don't eat, as much as you want, when you are more ruchni, in the sense of less physical, then you make the body into a keli, into a receiver, that when you do the mitzvahs, you will be margish the kedusha. Our problem is that we do mitzvahs, and we bring down kedusha, but we are very physical. We are very physical. Moshe Rabbeinu, you know, he was chatzi ish chatzi elokim. So what is a chatzi ish? Is, was he a chatzi ish, a half a man, because the other half was God? You know what I'm saying? You can learn that way, or you can learn that in the totality of his being an ish, he was only a chatzi. Why? Because he worked on himself. He worked on himself to subdue all his physical tivus, his urges and needs all his tivuses, you know, and so on and so forth. To such an extent, we had severely diminished the body's, the body's power over him. So, with the way I look at it, chatzi ish, chatzi alakim, is that even his physical was half. Because he had so worked on himself, he had so minimized, he had so ch- channeled his urges and drives, his physical urge and drives, to such an extent, we are... He felt ruchnius because this did not interfere as much. You know, it's, he had an incredible, you know, it's like a, 
you know, uh, he had a Bose radio, you know, it's supposed to be a great radio, uh, you know, he had an incredible radio. So therefore, he was able to pick up the broadcast with unbelievable refinement, you see. So the Jew has to avoid this. It's not enough to just do all the mitzvahs, you know what I'm saying, and to focus on that and to, to do it the right way, of course. So that creates the electricity, the broadcast. But wait a minute, what about you, the receiver? That's the, 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 the keli, the receptacle, receiver. So you've got to work on yourself, whether in all directions, to minimize the physicality urge and so on. There's, there are many great people who have to do it. Baba Sali, for instance. He was tremendous in that. The Baba Sali, I mean, he was a tremendous Baruch Kodesh, but not the real Ruch Kodesh. You know, he had incredible ability to pick up Ruchnius. Unbelievable. How? Because not only was his mid performance exemplary, but he was a Kodesh Vator. His Tahar was incredible. You know, I mean, there's stories about him, you know, where he once gave him something to eat, and all of a sudden he's eating and he just pushed away and says, it's just too good. Too pleasurable. He wouldn't do that, you know? And he, you know, because he worked on himself. He was a, he's a tremendous Kaddish, you know? He minimized his bodily urges, where they no longer interfered with his ability to pick up the or the energy, the spiritual energy of his mitzvahs. That's, in the end, what it was. So what does it mean that the Tahar His Tahara was incredible. There was once, uh, he told his Gabba and something like that. You have to read his book, but when you walk away, you say, what was this man really all about? What was his specialty? And the answer was that it's not only that he did the mitzvahs with such tremendous intentions and concentration and so on, fine. But his ability to say no to self was incredible. And therefore, he had enormously reduced his physical urges. They no longer controlled him. He controlled them. And therefore, he was able to receive the ruchnis that he generated to a much greater extent. And therefore, he was an incredible person because of that. So it is two ends here. Sumira, you know, work on yourself. In fact, that was the requirement of a Novi. A Novi had a prerequisite. He had to be a person that removed Gashmias. He had tremendous physical control over his body. You know, he worked on it. I mean, he really worked on it, you know, and so on. And besides that, he had to be tall. He had to go to the mikvah. He had to do Tikkun Hamidus, tremendous Midas. Then he had to remove Gashmias, <coughs> and so on. And th that enabled him to be an instrument that would be able to be a Novi. Because if he didn't, he couldn't be a Novi. He could be Mechavan only, Shemus, everything, and so on. And he would not be able to receive the ore of the Shekhinah. In fact, that made the difference, by the way, between the Vua. Some Novis were, got an A on the report card. So they picked up the Shekhinah, wow. Then the other guys who got a B plus. But the, so even though they, they're Nevi'im, but one Navi was incredible in terms of his ability to receive, and in the other Navi, he only got half the message, or whatever he got, but what with the same dvekas and exhilaration. So there are two stories to this. There you are. You know, to what extent you remove the physicality, and to what extent you do the mitzvah. You need both. Okay, gentlemen. Thank you very much. I'm trying to give you guys a story, you know. And, uh, you know, they, they came to America and they, they examined it. Gilu was a little girl or whatever, and the girl had some terrible disorder and she was really very sick and she needed major surgery. So meanwhile, the guy said, okay, you know, I was going to go come Sunday to have it checked out and Monday was going to be the operation. She was really very sick and then he decided to, to go to Borough Park. Meanwhile, there was this incredible snowstorm. He got stuck, so he wound up on the east side. He couldn't get off the highway, you know, you know was crawling. So he was on the air of Shabbos, you know, right before Shabbos, he was on the east side, you know. So all of a sudden he made his way and he didn't even know it, and all of a sudden he winds up in MTJ. He sifted first, you know, and so on. I went there, by the way, for a while. You know, and, and so the, the, he has no place to stay, so there was a Shamash. So the Shamash, he told the story, you know, the guy said, what are you doing here? And the guy said, okay, come to me for Shabbos, fine. 
So he came from Shamash, but you know. Meanwhile, the last the show through this, he said, Listen, I'm the Shamash of the Shul. I'm meeting, I'm meeting by Rabbi Moshe. You see the show. What? You see the show. No, no, he, in his house probably, yeah. Rabbi Moshe finds him. Wow, the God of the door, you know. So he went to Rabbi Moshe of Shal you know. And Rabbi Moshe asked him, you know, you know he, told, and he told him a story. He's got a daughter, never very sick. And the next Sunday, and Shabbos, the next day, he's got to go to the doctor. And then Monday's going to be a major surgery and all that stuff, you know. He asked Rabbi Moshe for a bracha. So Rabbi Moshe he said, Rabbi Moshe gave him a tremendous bracha, you know, whatever. He doesn't say what the bracha was. But Rabbi Moshe said, you know, whatever, and it was very warm, very heartwarming, was, you know. And the guy said he could feel the raw power of that bracha. Fine. That's Rabbi Moshe's bracha, right? Next day, Sunday, he goes to the doctor. And the Shamash, the Shamash was the same as the Shidduch, yeah. The yeah. Shamash says, you know, I got a daughter. Do me a favor, maybe you know somebody for her, you know. Okay. The guy goes back to Muncie, because that's where he was staying. And then uh, he tells, uh, you know, then Sunday to go to the doctor, you know. So the doctor, you know, he's checking up and so on and so forth. He's got this puzzled look on his face. So the doctor, come, you know, the guy sits down and says, what's the story? So the guy says, I don't know what's going on here. I said, this girl has nothing, no disease. He says, not only she has nothing, but there's not even a, 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 an, a, an indication that she ever had anything. And he said, in all my years, and he's in this specialty field, 12 years, so I've never, this is an incredible miracle. I've never seen anything like that. You know, it's not, it's not even a cure. It's ke'iloi hoya. You know, it's like, there's no indication whatsoever that this girl was ever sick. I can imagine the guy was like floored, you know. So, you know, so, well, you talk about a power powerful bracha, you know. I mean, it's, uh, you know, just uproot. But anyway, the guy goes back to Eretz and then two weeks later, it winds up that his nephew, this guy's nephew, became a, a chosen to the Shamash's daughter. <laughs> I mean, what, what a story, you know? But the power of a Moshe, you know, it's, it's like, it's, you know, how do you compare to that? So, you know, how do you do it, you know? Because, well, a Moshe was a Moshe the God Lador, you know, but obviously his brocho had such an incredible ability to bring down such a powerful ore of Kedusha that the, the Kedusha just just knocked out all the, whatever it was, just knocked it out. But he could draw down that spiritual energy because of his incredible stature of Avoida, you know, and so on and so forth. But anyway, I just read that today. So it's, <laughs> yeah, I wanted to share that. Oh, yeah, it's replete with stories. But then, you know, it's, uh, it's just an amazing story. The doctor couldn't believe.